Father, bless our community and bless the harvest that our uh, farmers are working on at this time that will benefit them and our community and give us the uh, knowledge that we need to make the proper, the best decisions for our community and bring peace to our country and be with our, our law enforcement as they have a pretty tough task at this time. In your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Andrew, yes. Uh, congratulations to all the seniors who are graduating, and uh, sidewalk's looking great. All that hard work and thank you. Uh, no, sir. Hang on. Oh, I guess I'd like to say thank you, Nola Package Delivery. So, them guys are not on Christmas rush. It's now 12 months out of the year. I mean, they are they're working their tails off. And they may not always get the packages they want when they want them, but they're doing the best they can for those of them. Not their fault, though. Okay, thanks. Uh, just on a side note, the leadership of Mitchell County is uh, really struggling this year to find members from next year's class. So if anybody knows of anything, please get a hold of me or Mark Fallon or so we can get an app in or Jason too. So I think we're at 12 right now. So like really that. quality ones that we like one that or two or, or three. Uh, yeah. Anybody, yeah, so. anybody at your work or places that employ, it's definitely a beneficial thing. Great program. So. Okay, thank you. Matt? Yeah, um, being that I have a nurse and a safety worker living in my home with me, I, I see value in passing a resolution supportive of enforcement of the governor's order to wear masks and in doing so, uh, publicize the resolution. Uh, enforcement obviously can be a challenge, um, but we can discuss that after passing it. I think. If we put it out there that we're going to be enforcing it, it will spur more people to wear masks. We can we can do warnings. We don't. It does, it's open ended on what what the uh, enforcement should be. And like I said, we can talk about that later. But again, I I just see value in passing that. I, I think you've got to get our numbers down in, in our community, and it's only going to get worse. That's all I have. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the uh, put in your packet, you know, sales tax, kind of what we've been monitoring and kind of a good indicator for our area. And again, it's not, doesn't mean we have the whole story or know exactly what the long-term ramifications are just yet, but we're at least holding steady, you know, after a couple of down years, we start off really strong and then of course the, the pandemic situation hit. So we're, we're still tracking well, you know, I mean, we're still having good months, kind of a, kind of hard to read up there on the screen, but you look up here, the 106 and the 119. You know, those are the last, I guess, two months that may have been slightly affected in some way. You know, it might show its head more as time goes on. You know, you got to remember those were a lot of unemployment bonus and a lot of stimulus check and a lot of tax return time. So it probably cushioned what may still be a delayed reaction to everything, especially depending on where this thing goes. Um, but I just wanted to report that. Kind of over here is where I kind of keep, you know, I usually hide this, but kind of where I show for my... Uh, that graph, which again, they're, they're all stacked on top of each other, but you can you can see, you know, 2020 is kind of peaking up above where we've always kind of been down here dipping at this time. So it's kind of maintained that trend line and maybe it'll kind of get close to black when we're all said and done. That's kind of the leader in the doghouse way back in the day, back in 2015. So it, we'll, we'll keep tracking that. I don't really, yeah, go ahead, Matt. That's accurate up to June, up through June? Yes. Wow. I mean, well, I mean, it's a delayed. It's probably from May or something, but yeah, it's, or, well, or March, I guess. Or April. March or April. Yeah, I mean, not, you know, again, it's hard to know because it is, it, you know, I, I guess to be, yeah, probably a prime, I mean, it is kind of a delayed thing, but so far, I think statewide, even the last, you know, they kind of get a handle on that pretty quick, and some places are seeing, you know, kind of some of your tweener towns, I'd call it, you know, not even the light size, but, you know, uh, Junction City, it's off like 20 or 30 percent because they all stopped going to Topeka, you know, and, uh, 
others, you know, probably vice versa. I mean, my guess would be flying is probably the opposite. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't know that. That's just complete, you know, complete theory. But so I think that's kind of why we're seeing at least steady, I would say, you know, in the sense of, um, um, I said the regional hubs were down like 25. Yeah. That's like the, going, yeah. Like yeah. So kind of some of your ones that were going to those places, kind of like other things that allow us to at least stay steady. So it, it might really be down, but in the sense it got made up for by just the fact that people shop more locally and had to buy more groceries here and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, so we'll just keep tracking it. I mean, it's just kind of about the most live indicator I've got besides trying to look at the unemployment rate and, and those types of things. So um, any questions on any other questions on that? No? Um, Safe Process School 2B, I think everybody commented on that, so I won't go too far into that, but they're pretty close to being on schedule. They're doing well. It's moving right along. Not a lot, not a lot of surprises. Um, our crews have been doing some of the more technical drainage stuff and making that look really nice. And, and uh, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll be past the fairgrounds by the fair time and they'll be on down the way. So it's been been really good um, uh, on that, that end of it. So. Um, the BNM guys, kind of like the last contract, are doing a really good job keeping it cleaned up and make, you know the yards looking nice and doing you know just uh, just doing a bang up job. So really appreciative of that. Um, water treatment plan update again, probably a broken record, but we are still working with Sarah Hines is our USDA person. I mean her goal is to have something here before the August August eighth is when they would like to take it up to get it funded. So it's you know, supposedly their top priority as far as the Topeka office and kind of in in there. In this region, anyways. So, um, you know, for example, we'd be competing with some water lines in Russell, but we're ahead of that, that type of thing. So, she's been working with uh, Stuart quite a bit to answer kind of the stuff that's in the PER that we got done and all those types of things. I know she got some more data from, from Mandy and, you know, just, just kind of those uh, condition questions. Um, I'll probably reach out her, to her this week to see if she needs to be on our July, you know, our next July meeting to. To kind of meet that we'd still have the meeting right before august 8th too but basically she kind of did like we did with the kdhe she'd be bringing some kind of a loan condition letter for us to approve and and then that way they could go take it and hopefully we actually get the money so once we got that going then we're we're ready to go you know i mean we're we're going to be out the gate and ready to get this thing done so um so yeah it's good developments you know kind of that, that slack has been taken up they've been you know those usa folks have been back to work here for the last month and getting some of that thing, those things done um, the last thing I'll, I'll mention, it's not on here, but again, these are recent developments that have, that have happened. Um, you might have heard about it, the SPARC legislation. Um, again, that's, that's federal dollars that are coming down through um, the state that, uh, you know, the first big chunk or, or part of this chunk went to, uh, let me see what's in here. Well, the first chunk of this is, is, is round one, and that's where we're at right now. I don't know why this is highlighted, but round one is, is where they're at right now. It's about one. 1.2 or $3 billion, I think, that came down from the from the feds, you know, to Kansas. Um, I would say probably 100, and don't quote me on this, but 150 million of it went right away to Wyandotte and uh, Sedgwick counties, you know, at the very, you know, they, that back in first part of April, probably, back when the virus was potentially going to hit those areas really hard and, and sooner than, than some of the others. So um, they kind of got their money sooner, and it calculated out to about $194 per population. Um, so that trickles down to Mitchell County. Mitchell County is the custodian, kind of like Mitchell County. We've got the health department. They kind of run the, uh, you know, kind of some of the stuff Matt alluded to, you know, those types of things. You know, they also are going to be the gatekeeper for these funds. But the intention is for it to trickle down to the, the cities and the hospitals and the schools and all those th type of things that need to, uh, um, uh, basically what it says is to strengthen health to allow our economy to reopen safely. And I think we've already been doing or have done. Um, not just the city, but everybody, and then to remain open, you know, so do we have sufficient, you know, help with the testing or contact tracing or the PPE or, you know, sanitization or, or those types of things. And again, and all those governmental sectors round two will then get it more to the public, private entities, you know, the businesses and grants and same with round three. So that money will kind of keep trickling back up and down because obviously we're, we're probably not going to be able to use all of that. Um, but that, that money will uh, keep getting granted out in different forms. But I think what they're trying to say is obviously we've had some expenses in dealing with it and maybe not so much us, but the hospital or the county or, or whatever, the schools, but also what are you going to need to be able to do or what are you going to have to do if we do have a big outbreak like Concordia or if we need to have school? I mean, what are some of those tools that they need to have to, to make it happen? So 
Um, so basically, it, it's called, you know, that's that's kind of what, uh, I can't remember what SPARC stands for, but something about, you know, revitalizing Kansas, something like that. Um, it's the RK part, but um, so so basically that, that funds will get deposited, half of it on July 15th with the county. Um, there is a committee kind of put together of, you know, some of the way from the school districts and the county and the hospital and the health department, you know, so we can take care of round one and get that all figured out as far as obviously the expenses that were incurred and then obviously then you know the things we need to do to to uh get ready for the the next round so um so then whatever's left of that 1.2 million will then flow back up to the state and then they'll kind of reallocate that back down for again the round two and round three so hopefully that's the down dirty and again this stuff's flying i mean this has just basically finally gotten to us here since uh you know, june 19th probably really the first real call about it so it's only been about two weeks of mail to digest it not even not even two weeks so um, they're, they're moving really fast. They, the county has to have a resolution to accept the funds by their, I think their next meeting, I believe, or no, by July 15th or something. Yeah, July 13th maybe. I can't, yeah, July 13th and money comes July 15th. We have to have their plan and all that stuff of how we're gonna, what we're going to do with it by August 15th. So it's just piling on type of thing. But I just wanted to let you guys know about that since you're probably hearing about that. And that just kind of was just, we've gotten more information since Friday when I made the packet. So. Yeah, that, that's all I got, Tom. Okay. Thank you. I don't think Heather was able to join. No, she, she had to have her, her uh, some wisdom piece pulled out. So she's a little under the, under the weather, but she's ready, raring to go because I know she'll be a big part of the Spark thing. And, and uh, I think they got the PBG CV grant is out, the application. So um, I don't know much about that right now as far as applicants, but it's out there. So. Um, next item on the agenda this evening. Anybody have any? Yeah. Approved. So moved. It's been moved by Council Adolph to approve resolution 2020-14. I have a second. Second. Second by Council McMillan. Any discussion? Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Next item on the agenda is resolution 2020-15, the uh, HVAC contract for the uh, so remember, we awarded the bid last time to Glassman, so now we actually have the contract back um, from them. So again, it's pretty straightforward. A lot of, a lot of boilerplate in here, but it, it stipulates the the uh, two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars right here on the on page two. Um, liquidated damages for every day it's past the due date against. It's kind of a time-sensitive project. You know, they'll they'll start. They've already you know they've already are going to get stuff ordered and, and going. Um, but they probably won't be able to actually get in there till mid August because they just got to be down for a week or two or three, you know. So we want to do it when it's not terribly hot and get everybody through, but they still want to get it done by October 30th so that it's ready for winter time. So it's it's a kind of performance contract on that type of thing, but that's what these guys are used to and ready to roll. So, um, but they've got their insurance pieces into us and uh, their bond and all that kind of stuff. So, um, should be should be ready to go. So moved by Council and Greenbaum to approve approved resolution 2020-15, the HVAC contract. Have a second. Second. Second by Council Meyer. Any discussion? Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Now my question is on Matt's question on having a resolution to support the match. Would that really be a resolution, or what would we need? Well, yeah, if you need a resolution, we would have to have something drafted, have it numbered. Okay. So, so it would have to be at the next council meeting since it's not on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, next item on the agenda under formal actions is the uh, mosquito treatment bid. At this time, I'm going to recuse myself and uh, refrain from the meeting. I'll step out. I'll turn the meeting over to Council President uh, Grable. So, give me a minute to set up. Yeah, I mean, I did have, just in case you guys are curious on what it looks like, I don't know. Um, it's just kind of the, the, the fogging part, I guess, looks like. Just came from Jesse. Through the St. John's football field, 
just a little bit of the pumpkin patch too, and we actually take the larvicide, raise it up in a container, and we send it into KDHE, and they do tests for it. Um, I was doing Dr. Jason Cheney's yard last night, and was talking to him about it, and there's already been two cases of West Nile virus in Hooper County this year already. So there's a, there's a ton of people I know that, you know, somebody puts a bill in the paper that's against it, but I think with, you know, the reason I came to the city was whenever I first started the business and started talking about doing the mosquito treatment, how many people had contacted me. It's the same thing I've done with the other town that go to the city first. And boy, it's one of the only cities around here that doesn't do it now. Um, Auburn didn't do it, Portland didn't do it, Lebanon didn't do it, but I now do those cities as well. So it's, uh, I mean, it's very effective. It's, it's not gonna put a bunch of chemicals out there and harm our pets and children and kids and you know adults and everything else. We do it in the evening. I have the full controls inside the pickup. I run an amber and white um, strobe LED light. I can shut it off. It, I come across the pedestrian. It's done after dark, so your pollinators and stuff aren't active. And we just go up. We don't go up and down the street twice. We just go up up the street and then we just shut off the intersection. We go down and we start at the other end and we come back down the other one. Work from north to south. And we kind of schedule it out like Dr. Jason is doing the city probably in three sections. You know, just just seeing how it, how it goes really. So you want how many, you gotta how many times where the mosquitoes will you? Get a treatment. Uh, we'd start, you know, if we pass it, we'd start as soon as possible. There's a lot of water side out there already. So I'd want the first thing I'd want to do is, is get all the, um, you know, the stagnant water, all those ditches and bridges and stuff that are around town, get all those treated. And then, um, you know, you got to have a little bit of wind. We want like a, a five mile an hour to a 15 mile an hour wind because it is, you know, it's a drifting agent. It's, it's, it's made to 50 parts per billion. It's made to drift, you know, very, very, very small droplets. And it's made to drift through the trees and stuff. And like I said, when it contacts the, the trees and you know hits the ground, it's it's not effective. So I don't know the statistics for when you start how much of that actually carries through, you know, and how much of it actually lands on the ground. I that I, I, guess, tell you. I guess my question is, um, when is when is mosquito season over? Um, well, mosquitoes are winter. Um, the winter is adults or eggs, and we would run for June, July, August. September and it all really just kind of depends there might be a treatment in October and there might not it just depends on you know doing the sampling we don't just go out four or five treatments yeah four or five treatments a year and, and then uh, like there are special events like down at the park and stuff I told Jason we put it in the bed to do that too before the um, oh there's that NAAA park thing I think camp out and there's that golf bill too which I know a lot of people are pretty excited about that play that frisbee golf down there and so, and it has no effect, like we talked about a couple weeks ago in the river. You know, they're not going to be, mosquitoes ain't going to nest in the river because there's constantly running water. You know, with all the flood water and stuff that we have, anything where there's standing water, that's what we're going to treat. Um, you know, I treat like the cattails and stuff that are in some of those ditches now that I learned in the <coughs> mosquito clinic instead of with the, the uh, brickets that I told you. Um, I bought a bag of uh, granules, that's a small granule mat, like what you do that nutrients or fertilizer, and it gets down in those granules. You know, or in the cattails and the vegetation a lot better to be more effective. Any other questions? Or? Now, Jason, I do have one for you real quick. Obviously, we put this out to bid, but we didn't see any other bids. In fact, we didn't receive any other bids. Is no. That clear? Okay. Yeah. Because that was a question that came up before. Yeah, we put it in the paper, I think. Five, six times. Yeah. For two weeks. Okay, so basically again we have option A, which is to just do fogging, option B, which is these tablets in standing water, option C, which would be a combination of A and B, or option D would be again to take no action. Uh, is there any further discussion, any questions or comments? Did anybody get any feedback other than, I mean, I got, I got feedback that 95% of it was against fogging. I got I, I didn't have much be I, I didn't have much against not to treat. They wanted to treat the stagnant water um, and the larvae, but I, I I mean that's just the feedback I got. Yeah, I was I got quite a bit and I'd say probably ninety eight percent of it was against the fall water. I had one that worked for it and everybody else said I talked to my few was about fifty fifty I don't know who does, but somebody's <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Can I make a comment there? But uh, go ahead. Oh, we did, you know, before I even considered doing this, and some of the other towns too, uh, put a poll on just to see how many people would be for it and how many people would be against it. It was like eight hours, and there was a bunch of people just going at each other. So I ended up deleting it. There was maybe 20 people that were against it. This is on the void by Phil period, and over 200 people that were for it. There, I know there was people walking around town that was all against it, and they were trying to get people to call and text the councilman and show them the papers. I had multiple calls about it as well. People calling me and wanting to know what it is. You know, it, it comes in the same sense of, you know, there's 4,500 people in Deloitte. So if you have 100 people that are against it and you have 4,400 people that are for it, you know, I mean, it just comes to show, like, what do you want to do for your community? Well, West Nile's on the, on the rise, Zika's on the rise, Mosquito Born Illness is on the rise. We talked to the vet clinics about the about the uh, heartworm and stuff that's out there that's going around the animals right now. They said it's, I mean, it's every year it's just higher and higher and higher. And I spent two thousand dollars here two years ago for my dog that was on heartworm medication, and heartworm transmitted to mosquitoes. Now it goes the same way. If I would have put something in the paper and I would have went around and talked and had people pro for it, and say, hey, get a hold of your councilman, call them, email them. It would have been the same thing. You guys would have had a lot more calls for people for it, you know, supporting it than against it too. So. And on that on that post that we did out of those 20 people that were against it, you know, I don't know everybody here. As my wife had said, probably 15 to 18 of them were from the same little family. So I did just want to throw that out there too. I'd, um, I'd like to throw out that when we talked about um, uh, inspection rental house, we got pulled over. When we talked about expanding the statutory authority of zoning, we got pulled over. We did not have a pulled over. I don't, I don't know that their the condition is all that bad. And, and the talk I've been listening to here is, I don't know. I'd like to see it try. And so that, that's where I'm standing at. I, I'd, I'd be in favor of doing both, but I, I'd also vote for a compromise to just go. I, I, I'd like to try it. I know. Again, I've been in places which have done it, and I've seen the improvement when you've done it. I did do additional research after, obviously I saw the links that were shared to us on the email. And I got a couple calls probably just like everyone else did. And I visited those, read those articles, but then I also found the counter argument uh, from CDC, from KDHE, from WHO, from a whole lot of different organizations. You know, some of the comments of it hurts your pets. Well, some of those clean pick colors that you give your pet or put on your pet with baths and whatever actually contain greater amounts of chemicals than the fogger does. <laughs> so yeah, I understood some of the concerns. I would say I was closer to Tony. Um, I talked to additional people and I would say the split I had was more 50-50 because people called me were the ones who were saying no. The people I spoke to in person unsolicited who just sort of we were discussing it were mostly either a you know I'm okay either way, or that sounds like a good idea. I have problems with mosquitoes every summer, so that's just my personal. I don't know, Jamie, if you had anything you want to say on it, or yeah, I, I <laughs> but it's very similar to that, I guess. I mean, the only ones that reached out to me were were negative against it, uh, you know. But when you talk to people, and they kind of like us the first time we thought about it, like, well, you know, uh, I guess I did I did reach out to a friend of mine that's that's uh, in the pest control business and. You know, his take is we could do a whole lot more just by getting rid of water, standing water, and buckets of water, and so forth. You know, where they can, you know, mosquitoes can breed, but but certainly going after larvae. So I personally am 100% for that, and I'm, I'm probably a toss up in my own mind, and I, I would, you know, probably be would, would be against the fogging in general, uh, completely, but. You know, I would be also interested in fogging like the park area. You know, I don't know if we can if we can carve things out like that, but instead of going down the streets and and, and fogging people's <coughs> homes and neighborhoods, you know, to do you know, as a start so starting point a park or the ball field area. Right. You know, and and you know, and I don't know if that if it loses effectiveness, but maybe it's a, a part way and then, you know, you know, more feedback from, from people after that. I don't know where, you know, if you pulled everybody, where everybody would shake out. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at. Um, mm -hmm. The park area would probably be good. Uh, I mean, nobody lives down there. Um, 
Can you do that, Jesse? Or is that well, I mean, the mosquitoes move for you know a mile a night. They move around, and this stuff has the killer in it. It's got the your um, you know your deterrent and stuff too. So I do. I, I don't think you guys are gonna get the results out of it again. Like you know, Smith Center they do it three times a week down there. They, they spend over fifteen thousand dollars a year just to do Smith Center. And they use the exact same product that we do. Um, you know, it, it's very effective. Rick uh, Heilman is the one that does it, and he'll go around and anytime he gets a call about mosquitoes. He's back in that area to call him. It might be the night after he did it. But yeah, you're going to have people that are going to bitch and complain about doing it. But like I said, if I go to the paper and I put something in there for you guys, and I say, hey, contact your councilman, and contact uh, the guy that put the, the deal in the paper to begin with, and come up with a solution to do the mosquitoes, I think you guys are going to have a heck of a lot more phone calls. It's not that I'm going to do that, but I'm just saying it goes two ways. There's a lot more people. And I've been doing this business now for two and a half months and, and already had 25 to 30 yards on, on spraying the exact same product with the backpack folder. But when you do somebody's yard and a neighbor doesn't do any control, you're kind of, I mean, you're not really wasting your money because it kills scares, it kills spiders, it kills, you know, or the, the towel stardust that I use in my backpack um, folder with the BioMix 3 plus 15. It doesn't even have any effect on white did, did you so, say? Did you say it'd be prudent though, maybe just because I just think it'd be a waste of the city. I mean, if you're either going to fog, you need to fog the city. Yeah. If you're going to treat water side, treat the water side. I mean, we used to just fog our parks and Walmart. But my, but my point is, it would be a good first toe dip since it is yeah. kind of a thing. And, I mean, so I at least do, do, at least do the waterways do. and see how it goes. Yeah, you might yeah. get more people out like that or I don't. And then, I mean, I don't think anybody's completely opposed, opposed to it. We just kind of, it's a new thing for us. I do have a procedural question. Sure. Maybe, uh, the phone telling you for the mayor to be just to keep running this. Do I still have the ability? So to, okay, yep. That's all I wanted to double check. Yep. That that was meant for and if, if you guys are worried about the biomass, there is that wonder side. You know, it comes back from spending eighty-five dollars a gallon to spending one hundred and thirty dollars a gallon, and it's an all-natural feeder oil, and it's a natural product. <laughs> but from what I got from down there, there's just not, there's not, it's not near as effective. You know, it might be something too if you guys are worried about the chemical. But I know the farmers and stuff working in the ag industry all around town spray. Paraquat and, and that's your Agent Orange. That stuff drifts and moves for miles. You know, that's the same thing they use in Vietnam, just different stolen crossbone labels. And this is, you're putting like that, the rep said the other day, 0.02% of active ingredient from methane in the air every minute. You put more chemicals on you when you spray yourself with off than you ever will being exposed to a biomass. Any further discussion? I'd like to make a motion to go with option B. Okay, we have a motion from Councilor McMillan to go with option B, which is just the waterway that you're currently in the waterway. Uh, question about friendly interest. Uh, are you going to add any parts or uh, would do any good? Is there a second for the motion on the floor? Second. Second by Councilor Meyer. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carried. If someone can please get the uh, mayor of town, put a number and go back in. And adjourn. Yeah, and adjourn. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you for your time, sir. <laughs> no, no, in all seriousness, though, I, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, we can have a civil discussion about the topic. Thank you. I mean, I'm shaking and wanting to jump across. <laughs> no, I take it back. No, we did option B. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One, one to find out. I'm turning the meeting back over to the mayor. Yeah. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Don't move. <laughs> Favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion carries. We're
for adjournment. Next item on the agenda is uh, here in the work section on the Blue Cross Blue Shield. But Katie, do you have anything? I don't have anything. No, sir. Okay. No, okay. okay, we'll go to the Blue Cross Blue Shield. All right, I put it upon the table for you, so hopefully you can see it, visualize it a little bit. This is part of the, um, we're getting things lined up for the, the fully funded after we kind of did all that research and work for everybody to get a good recommendation in. So I think it's going to be a good um, good way forward. Uh, we're, get, we're getting the contract should be to us here in the next couple of weeks. So it's been kind of, I guess, we had to kind of do a couple of questionnaires and some different things to kind of get it submitted to Blue Cross so that they can, uh, and they can uh, um, develop those contracts and get them to us. Well, kind of the next part for us is just kind of setting uh, the uh, participation that we want to do for the employees and, and, and those types of things. Uh, let me get down to it. There we go. There's one. Sorry, I printed these off. Thanks to Mandy for putting these together. So, um, them just a little bit more okay so this will be the 20 it'll be two spreadsheets that we'll be looking at so this is the, the 2021 and then this is the uh, prior year so you can have something to uh, look at relative to it obviously we're familiar kind of with and again this these numbers kind of float because of how many contracts we end up having etc but this is at least apples to apples in that regard um, as best we can. So, um, so the uh, 1920. So you can see, you remember that number 893 was the total for that, plus the 67 thousand dollars. So you're at like 900, 950 thousand uh, dollars with the uh, health and dental was what it was uh, prior. Um, with uh, the new the new thing, obviously, the max, remember the max exposure that we had, and obviously we hope it ended up being less than that. We don't really know, but it's 978, 739, plus the dental is at 65, 493. So that kind of gets us, uh, you know, kind of comparatively. So th this number right here is, is kind of showing the increase between the previous health costs and the current health costs. So it's about an $85,000 increase, which is kind of what we knew it was going to be about that those just just below that 10 percent mark you know those, those single digits uh we did save a little bit on the the dental you know so that came in a little bit lower but again kind of wash that out um then kind of what we were proposing to add to this and, and part of it's we're going to have the employees kind of carry the cost to be more on the vision side but the ambulance thing i think is as part of being a good employer and a good uh, steward of our employees i think it's something that we need to put the bill on on that again it's fairly cheap fairly small but it just provides them coverage for the air ambulance side of things so that we don't have any issues uh, with that. Um, uh, that that, that kind of helps us uh, cover them so they don't get a big surprise bill, which just impacts everybody because it basically was never negotiated with the Blue Cross Blue Shield. So kind of what um, I, uh, kind of what it comes down to is, you know, kind of what the employee cost share is. You know, a couple years ago, we bumped that up um, I believe it used to be 85.15 on this part, and I think we paid 100% on the uh, health care or the, the high deductible. We moved that to 82.5 and 17.5 and, and 96 and 4 a couple years ago. Um, you know, we're, we're asking a little bit more on their copay this time, so I felt comfortable on the traditional side potentially leaving it there. Um, the high deductible side, we, we bumped it another, another percent. And again, trying to get closer to evening the city portion, as you see all these, we're really close. Um, probably next year, probably be one more percent to kind of even that up is what I would propose. And, and kind of what that does is it kind of soaks up, as you can see here, the, the difference between last year and this year is 79,000. So it soaks up kind of some of this, the increase here, you know, at least matches up with, with the additions that we have plus a little bit, I guess you could say they're covering a little bit more of that. Plus we're asking them to, to pay a little bit more of a copay. So um, again, it's kind of looking at those, you know, those, those arrows in the quiver, you know, how many of those do we want to shoot at a time? Um, uh, so that, that's kind of what this, this does for us is, um, it, it kind of lets us, uh, you know, save some for, for next year, 
Uh, and again, hopefully that uh, the grand total, you know, that's the plan is that just comes in less and we're going to be in a lot better shape. But uh, the, the total uh, employee participation between uh, the, the plans will be about 100, almost $120,000, $117,600 out of that, that plan is what the employees are responsible for at this time. And that's a Compared to where we got out. 103000 last year, so we're, we're asking for about another 14000 And again, these are adjustable. It's, you know, the, the, the high deductible side, if you want to match that up just even a little bit more, you can go to 94% um, and 6%. It's, it's kind of a, you know, again, trying to keep it tenable for the employee. It's kind of a jump, you know, for you know, 81, uh, or, you know, 37 bucks per paycheck for these guys, you know, and we're not, we're not contributing anything on the HSA either. So some corporations will make you pay more on this side, but they'll give you a chunk on the HSA. We don't do that here. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't quite double it, but that's what it would do on that part versus, you know, if you keep it at the 95 and five, it, it, uh, it, uh, you know, it keeps it at about the $9 for some people, you know, $13 for the family you know, per paycheck type of thing. So um, um, it, it's it's just kind of whatever you want to do as you kind of ramp this thing up and, and uh, yeah, so that, they get to 120, they found another 5,000 is what you get out of them. It, but the nice thing is we already have a lot of people on that HSA, which is the direction we want to go. Was any of this put up? Not yet. This is kind of well. I mean, we've talked because it's pretty similar to what we're doing. But yeah, yeah, that'd be kind of the next step is to we talked about that. But I kind of want to talk to you guys first about going around to all of them to to uh, kind of explain it and show it to them. But I kind of wanted to get somewhat buttoned down before I do that. So when you, when you talk about nine dollars per paycheck, and I'm, I'm trying to follow all that. I guess. Yes, that's fine. Is that from which number? Uh, that well, okay, so. Their pay, pay, per, their pay paycheck is this one right here, the 3126. So we're looking at a 30, 30 percent increase yeah. over last time. Yep. I would just ask if we stuck with the 964 did not make a change, uh, yeah. we can handle that, right? That's not a concern. Well, it's, I'm, I'm just asking. Just, just tax money. We can, we could maintain and not take a severe hit on our budget. Well, you're gonna you're going to you know regardless because that's just coming from the budget. But yes, I, you know severe would be probably a, a strong word. But yeah, it's just it's it's just another. It's only five thousand dollars. It's not over. It's five thousand additional dollars. You know what I mean? So it's um, you know it, so yeah you could you with the difference and just say hey, just from the increased cost they're already gonna take more on just because of the increased cost of the plan. You know so yeah that's I'm I'm just was kind of just. The only thing I was doing here, Andrew, with this was right now our city portion on the high deductible is thirteen hundred. We're paying. We're up here. We're twelve seventy three. So I was like, I'm just trying to right. tune I, that I, up. I understood that. I yeah. just was asking the question. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it's you know, yeah. To be right on it, you know, the big impact is just the overall increase, no matter what. You know what I mean? You know, this yeah. is more just how much do we want to keep, you know, to maintain this. We want to ask employees to help us maintain that a little bit more. And I think you know, if it's reasonable, I think there would be some interest in that just because we, they do like the plan, but we, yeah, we do want to keep it palatable. I understand that. But I think you also need to remember you're adding vision and ambulance. And so there's, there is an increase, but they're paying for some extra stuff or they're getting yeah. some extra things. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, that's a few dollars, but a few dollars per paycheck. So, so it's kind of hard to compare because it's not completely apples to apples. Right. It's like you said, what's in there? I'm looking at what, 30,000? You get blown out? <clears throat> Probably, I mean, it's a yeah. lot. It was 11, 22 years ago. Really? <laughs> you know, I mean, last year in Great Plains, I saw a pretty similar raise in our yeah. deductible. I mean, what we have to pay out of pocket for insurance. Um, School system did the same thing, too. It, it, it literally, I think it actually jumped. Like fifteen bucks per check paycheck for me, you know. But yeah, I wish I'd get to these bucks with the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, family, because we leave the, the 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 traditional plan more the same. 
that would be uh, $14 for a family more, you know, per paycheck. You know, um, if you left the percentage is the same on this, it'd be, you know, again, that high deductible, but again, they're on the hook for substantially more dollars if they have an issue, but, um, you know, it's, it looks, oh yeah, it's pretty minimal on that one. There's not a lot of increase on that side of it. We're trying to figure out the percentage then. Is that what we're looking like? We're trying to get in the direction for him. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Next time, I guess. We're, next, next time, we would vote on what the final resolution is. That's basically the consideration. Did you have a clear sense of where we're wanting to go? No. <laughs> that's good because I don't think we do either. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you thinking? Are you I mean, thinking what, what's your suggestion? Is this an either or? No, no, because these are two different plans, Matt. So I, I would say this top one's fairly dialed in because it's right. it's kind of we kind of went more aggressive with it a year ago. This is just saying, hey, you know, if we want what the city's contributing for a, an employee, a single employee, to be the same as this one, you know, you, you might want to tighten this percentage up just a little bit. Now again, it's more ass from them. I totally get that, you know, but it gets it closer. You know what right. I mean? So it's you know, it's not quite as skewed. Um, not that it's it's not ter it's not terribly out of whack either, but um that way you're regardless of what they're choosing it's it's uh it's pretty close um but you know that that increases that per paycheck by nine dollars which you know thirteen dollars so we're not we're not we're talking a few bucks here. you wear a hat on both sides of this what you're yeah doing. i mean do you know what i mean it's not a, different are? Are, they, are they small are they small claims no no big claims yeah i mean, I mean well we got a lot of small ones, but it's the big ones that really push our premium up. Yeah. Could we split the difference and do 95.5 and 5.5 per year and then next year? I mean, we're already doing a half percentage on the first part. Because that splits the difference and at least it sort of yeah. pushes off. Maybe hey, you can do year. whatever you want. So it's just that for us. I'm just trying to, you know. Um, of the, of the total, um, health and dental, you know, of the total, sorry, benefit oh, yeah. amount. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so basically we go from 8 to 12, 68 to 731, 41, we go from correct. 12, 56 to 1130, 861 to 775 and 417 to 375 is the deal. And what's your number at the bottom there, Jason? Is that indicative of 82? So. 82 instead of 79 and 797. Yeah. Of the, yeah, well, yeah. 3,000 more, basically. Well, no, so the employee portion would be 114, so basically 115. Okay. And, and you know, what this is really trying to say is 82,000 more than last year. Well, 25,000. And, and, and strictly speaking, the health insurance was 85,000 over last year, so they're at least covering that plus a little bit of the additional stuff we've tacked on there. As a benefit package, that's fine. I can bring it back like this, and again, it can still change even at that point. It just yeah, the emotion. Right. Good start. Yeah. Two weeks to think about it. Yeah, bring it next week. <laughs> okay. Uh, any further topics or discussion, Jason? You have anything else for us? No, I know. Chefs still having fireworks at the lake. I believe they are. Yep. 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 So. Or as we know today, that's chambers. Yeah, yeah, the, yep, the chamber, and and uh, we got a lot of good donations from everybody, and that's kind of the way it's the way it's heading. So some of the communities are shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll call this totally adjourned. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks.